Hello to you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. If you're about to listen to this on your way to sleep, I often hear that my voice makes people drowsy. So try to stay awake. Maybe you'll learn something about this subject matter. That's a little joke to some people out there. You know exactly who I'm talking about. So today we're talking about testing yourself. It's a very simple concept. It's been elaborated on by many people who motivate, who go out of their way to make sure people are pushing themselves to the extreme. They lead by example. We all have mentors and public figures and family members and friends, loved ones, people we work with, people we aspire to be. And all of these people all contribute to a little bit of part of us of how we make up our DNA of how tough we are. Because it is very hard and intimidating to be with someone all the time who has an incredible work ethic and they have an incredible flame within them to drive them forward every day and it seems like they have no motivation at all it's just discipline they're just going after it i feel like i could be even better at that i've gotten to a place where i even impress myself sometimes what i'm doing but it's a routine that's built into my dna right now it's a rhythm it's a pattern that i've adopted that's empowered me to really push myself every single day and i've noticed the more i've i do that the easier tasks that I used to look back on and say, wow, that's impossible for me. Once I got rid of that word impossible, <clears throat> excuse me, don't get me wrong. There are so many things in this world that you, you just can't do. Everybody has physical, mental, emotional limitations. You just can't do everything in this world. The things that people can do in Japan that you cannot do here in the United States because the geography is different. It's just that simple of a difference to say something's impossible. That's just an example. But there's plenty of things that other people that are right next to you in the proximity to you right now that can do things that will blow your mind. But don't stop there. Don't sell yourself short as a human being. There are things you can do that that person cannot do. We all have something we can do that other people cannot do or cannot do as well. Does that mean you should focus on that? Not necessarily. That, that just means you have the capability of doing things that other people would consider to be impossible. And as far as I'm concerned, that's enough motivation and self-enlightening just for yourself to get up and be like, you know, I know I am good enough to do this certain thing. So if nothing else, if nothing else, I know I can do this thing. And I can do it better than most people. Whether I choose to focus on that or not is up to me. So that's when we travel from the heart up to the mind. And you wrap your mind around, okay, I'm good at this thing. So what am I going to do with it? Or I am good at that thing. I'm good with that. Let me step away from that and walk over here to someplace that's unknown. Someplace I've been wanting to go. Someplace physically and mentally is challenging for me. It's intriguing to me. It's exciting. It's adventurous. It's something that I, I'm not required to do. It's something I want to do. And damn it, I'm going to go do it. If you can get your mind in that place, you start a whole new strand of yourself that's going to branch off of you. And it'll never, ever return back into you the way that it went out. Meaning once you experience that thing, whether you fail at it or succeed, it's a part of you now. That strand will forever be there. You will forever know you gave it a shot and whether you succeeded or you failed, you took a chance. You tested yourself to do something you believed in your mind may or may not have been impossible. But how do you know if anything is possible? Forget impossible. How do you know anything is possible? If you don't put your feet in the ground and start walk, walking towards that possibility. It's fine and it's okay to know your limits. It's perfectly fine. Everybody has limitations. Everybody has limitations. We know that. It, it's not hard. That's one of the most recognizable things you can see on any individual without even communicating with them. You know that that person has limitations. <clears throat> the difference between some people with limitations and others is that a lot of people with limitations will settle on them. Other people will want to break free of them. 
And then you have the people kind of in between who are, they do more than what an average human being has to do. But there are always extremes to these things. There's always extremes. You have the low end where a lot of people will fall back into being comfortable. They sink in to themselves. They find out the hard way that after it's all said and done and when it's far too late, they gave up way too much of themselves doing absolutely nothing with their lives. They watch the parade of other people who are doing things that they wanted to do walk right by them, making all the noise in the world, beating on drums, throwing candy, setting loose balloons, animals, floats. The parade is going year after year after year right past them. And they're just sitting on the curb, sitting, eating, and watching. That looks like fun. That looks pretty. That person looks nice. That person looks strong. That person looks creative. Never thinking, maybe I should just stand up and start walking with the parade, see where it goes. <laughs> it's really that simple. It's really that simple. And you have the people in the middle. The other people who get up and they start walking with that parade. They start walking with it. They start getting in the rhythm of the parade. They start having fun. They start interacting. They start trying out new things. They start being uncomfortable. They start laughing and dancing with the clowns. They start interacting with the kids on the curb. They start speaking. They start dancing. They start moving. They keep moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. Year after year, they keep on joining those parades. And they don't get off. They have fun with it. They look forward to it. This is the fun area. This is the area where you're in that gray zone where you don't have to do it. It's your choice. It's making you happy. And no matter what aspect of that parade you jump into, you're going to be happy because it was your choice. It was your decision. But then you go one step further. There's always an extreme. Then you have the people who are in charge of putting it all together. They're doing a little bit of everything. They're planning. They're putting together the floats. They're putting the makeup on the clowns. They're blowing up all the balloons. They're shaking hands with all the kids. They're playing all the instruments. They're not doing one parade a year. They're doing several. They're pushing themselves. Why? Not because they have to, but because they want to. But they don't always want to just do it. Some days they don't want to do it. But they say, you know, just to give me a little information about what I can do further in here, I'm going to go talk to this person to find out what else I can do. So in the next parade, I get to do something a little different. So it doesn't get monotonous. It doesn't get boring. It doesn't give me a reason to quit. These people are information seekers. They want to know more about themselves through other people, through experiencing things. They're testing themselves. They're walking through the invisible walls. They want as many strands coming out of them as possible of life and experience and participation and being active. They're allowing all the positive energy from all these positive experiences to settle in and become part of them. And they're finding out through all this, each year, life becomes so much more fulfilling. These are not just words. These are things I've incorporated in myself. This isn't BS. This isn't spin. This isn't filler. This isn't inspirational motivation. These are facts. The problem is, is a lot of people don't want the hard part of standing up and getting involved first. Because the person who's in that extreme state running these parades and interacting in every way possible. Remember, this is just a metaphor. This is just an example. Nobody's saying you have to go run off and join the circus in a carnival. We're not saying that. We're not saying turn into a circus freak. We're saying <laughs> there are ways to get to where you want to be, but you have to accept where you are now. And where you are now may not be the best place. Sitting on that curb in the cold, freezing to death, eating your popcorn is probably not where you want to be when the parade is passing you by and people are handing you things. They're saying, hey, get involved. They're literally handing you a hand. Here, get up. Come join us. It's just a simple decision. And it does seem simple. Know your limits. Know them. Know them well. 
There's nothing wrong with that. But I think you have to also understand that it's important to test yourself every once in a while just to see where you at in life. How tough are you? Where are you mentally? Emotionally, how strong are you? You have to self-evaluate. You have to push a little further. And it's really easy to do these things because we all have a baseline of what's comfortable for us. Whatever is comfortable for us, we, we will sink into that. And we will lay there. It's comfortable. Whatever is making you comfortable and you're enjoying it, you just take it up a notch. That's all. If you walk 30 minutes a day, walk 35 the next time. Add a minute each time. That's all. It's just that simple. If you write in your diary, write an extra page. It's really that simple. Just start taking things up a notch and you'll find going on up a notch on smaller tasks will start equaling bigger ones and they'll just keep growing and growing and growing. Suddenly you'll walk in five, six miles a day like it's nothing and you're looking forward to the next day and you're doing it every single day as a pattern routine. You're not even thinking about it. You've lost weight. You feel great. You're eating better. You, your smile is better. You're more energetic. That's just an example. But it filters into everything else. Writing that extra page in that diary, something great might come out of you that maybe you didn't know could have come out of you because you've always just stopped at the, I'm just going to write one page today. Maybe you should write more. Maybe you should write until your hand falls off. We can get into the extremes here. You have to test these things. You have to test who you are. And I think it goes without saying. I think every person wants to push themselves a little further. You know when you're slacking off on things, when things could be better. And it's even at your job. Are you just skating by? Are you actually going above and beyond where people are looking at you in a way where they're saying, okay, this person is an example of what this position is all about. If I looked up the descript the job description in the dictionary, your picture would pop up. And you're not doing it for them. You're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for yourself. You have to always remember that, that it starts with you. When you walk up to a mirror and you look into it, you don't get a picture of somebody you saw 20 minutes ago first and then you morph into yourself. It's you who you see first. And that's the best thing in the world. Because when you look in that mirror, you're reminded every time that you exist and that you're not going away anytime soon. Not if you don't want to. So you might as well make the best of it. It's just like going to school. At a certain point, at a certain age, yes, you can quit. But at, to a certain point, you kind of have to go. Whether you like it or not, you kind of have to make the best of it. You learn from it, and who knows where you're going to be when you come out of it. But you experienced it whether you like it or not. Why not incorporate that type of ideal into your life now? With things that you're afraid of, with things you feel like may be impossible. Take that I am out of that word and just go with possible. Because even if you don't get all the way there, you're again, you're setting off strands off of your body to you're learning. You're just reinventing yourself. You're recreating somebody who is begging you to do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be wanting to do this in the first place. Your mind wouldn't drift to these thoughts if you didn't want to do it. Your mind and your body is craving something. It wants you to do something and you have to act on it or you're letting yourself down. You are sabotaging your future self. Your future self is going to look at you and think, why didn't you give me a chance? I wasn't asking much. I was just asking in some of those moments where you could have done more. I just would have appreciated if you had done just a little bit more. And not ran. Not cowered down in a corner and gave up. Not made excuses. Not looking at yourself and saying, I know I've made mistakes in the past, but I forgive myself for them and I don't want to move forward without any excuses. I'm just going to wipe the slate clean and start over. It's your life. You don't owe anybody else anything. If you made mistakes in the past, if you apologize and people have forgiven you and you've forgiven them, mistakes have been made, start over. Just start over. You have a right to do that. You're a human being. Nobody gives you, nobody has a right to tell you that you don't have a right to start over your life in any which way you want, as long as it's not hurting anyone and it's not negative and it's not going to take away from other people's lives. 
If it's about you, it's about you. Just start with yourself first. And when things crumble again, because they will crumble again, because the stronger you get, more things are going to come to you. It's not like life goes away just because you figure out a few things, how to do things better, and you've tested yourself, and you push yourself, and you've gotten stronger mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You've gotten stronger in all those areas, but now life thinks, well, if you can handle all that stuff when you were weaker, how about this big boulder that's going to land on the back of your neck? How are you going to handle that? That's why it's so important to test yourself. To get as many strands of knowledge and experience off of your body as you possibly can. So you're protected. It's almost like your armor you're creating. Those strands will protect you. The more you know, the more you experience, the more protected you are. The more safe you're going to feel, the more you're going to be able to enjoy life. The more success that's going to come to you. Because you're, you're ridding yourself of all those excuses. You, you're learning from all the failures. And when those successes come, they're going to feel even better. I challenge you to test yourself today. Not only today, but each day after that as well. You can't live in mediocrity for the rest of your life if your mind and your body and your heart and your soul is telling you that it wants more. You're going to feel so unbalanced until you start figuring this stuff out. It's a hard reality. It's hitting you right in the face. It's punching you in the gut. It's trying to rip the soul from your body. This is life. How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to stand there and just let it beat the crap out of you? Or are you going to fight back? Nobody is asking you to be the toughest man or woman in the world. Nobody is expecting you to overcome things that are so life threatening to you where you have diseases involved and you have you lose money and you have bankruptcies and you have all these things that happen to you in your life your children aren't the way you want them to be your marriage fails we know those lists of demons and things that happen in our lives we know this we know that darkness we know that pain the sorrow the seclusion depression we know all this stuff what about all the stuff that you don't know on the opposite side of the ledger the positive side the side that's going to help you get over there. You start moving over there as fast as possible. And you don't worry about what direction you're going. Just close your eyes and run. You're not going to hit anything because back that way you haven't experienced anything. All the stuff that you can run into is on the negative side. If you haven't experienced all the positive stuff, there's nothing to run into. You're going to create as you go. You just got to start running. Some people don't have time to walk. Some people need to start running. Are you one of those people? It doesn't take long to take a moment to self-reflect and think about your life thus far and where you want it to be. To visualize and manifest your future self and try to figure out what would you say to this person about the state you're in now and how it would affect them. If there's some place you want to be in the future, how do you bridge that gap? Because otherwise it's not going to happen. You can't say you want to be wealthy in the future and you're sitting on the curb eating popcorn as the parade goes by. I don't think your future self is going to want to hear that. I think they're going to want to hear you got up. You started walking, you started getting involved and experiencing new things and you test yourself to see if these things are possible in your life. Instead of finding out through self-reflection that goes nowhere, that's steeped in negativity, that your life is doomed for impossibilities. You're not predetermined or predestined for that. Nobody is. This is life. You have to figure out what you want to do with yours. But you start with a simple test. Every day, start bringing everything up a notch. Start doing things better. Start being the best version of everything that you can do for yourself. If no one has told you this today, I love you. You deserve to hear that. Salute to you all. The brave never fall.